<laughs> Welcome to Speak for Yourself, Marcel Mwadi, Mayo Alto. We about that action Hey, too? not like Colin, bro. Nah. No. Who's our Baker Mayfield? Carson Wentz. Oh, yeah, so you get to you. All right. <laughs> Cam Newton for you. Let's get it started, man. It's our top story. Delivered by Pizza Hut. Order today at PizzaHut.com. They both go on the show if they want to. All right, let's start with the Seahawks. All season has been filled with reports of frustration and trade rumors, all centered around Russell Wilson. Seattle star quarterback expressed himself yesterday, posting a workout hype video using a line from the movie Training Day, quote, it takes a wolf to catch a wolf. So, Acho, what does Russell Wilson have left to prove? Bro, I think he has to prove who is he. Ooh, so, identity? Um, yeah, identity. I'm starting big Damn. picture, y'all. Mm. Y'all remember Russell Wilson comes into the league, third round, uh, third round selection. He's not even supposed to start. Matt Flynn is supposed to start. Matt Flynn was making really good money. All of a yeah. sudden, yeah. Russell Wilson, the quarterback that was at NC State and then at, at Wisconsin, he shows up in Seattle. Humble guy. Mm. Humble means. Mm. Just wants to be a team first, win by any means necessary kind of dude. No, cool. Then by around year five, Sal, by around year six, things started to change. They started to transition. Okay. He still wanted to win, that is Russell Wilson, but he didn't want to win by any means necessary. Ah. Now Russell Wilson wanted to win the Russell Wilson way. Yeah. He wanted to win through Russ. At first, let's just win however we got to win. Shout out to the 12. Shout out to the Seahawks. Um, but then it turned into... I want to win how I want to win. I want to cook. I want it to go through me. I'm a top three quarterback in the league. Nobody is saying you are not Russell Wilson. Mm. So, so when I think about what does Russell Wilson have to prove, he has to prove that he is willing to win even at his own individual expense. Damn. Damn. So when Russell Wilson Shot. won the Super Bowl, the Seahawks were 13 and three. That's the best record Russell Wilson's ever had. Okay. When Russell Wilson won the Super Bowl, he had the second fewest passing yards of his career. He had the second fewest passing attempts of his career. He had the third fewest passing touchdowns of his career. But collectively, the Seattle Seahawks enjoyed their greatest success of his career. Yes. So while Russell Wilson was not thriving individually, the collective unit was thriving. Mm -hmm. But now the collective unit is not thriving to the same degree that they were. However, Russell Wilson is thriving. Most touchdown passes of his career this past year in 40. Only time he's ever eclipsed a 40-touchdown mark. Yeah. Russell Wilson throws for the most passing attempts of his career this past year. So Russell Wilson is individually doing his thing. But collectively, the Seahawks are faltering. So what does he have to prove, I think, to me, to the Seahawks fans, to himself, mm. is that he's willing to win even if it cost him. I love that. Poetic. Eloquent, that's my co-host, and I agree with you. Um, I'm not going to go identity as much as just based on what I've seen, individual and team performance, trying to really bridge those two together. I think that Russell Wilson is sitting there, if he's honest with himself in the mirror, he wants to prove a lot. And the first thing he wants to prove is that he can be the reason that they get a ring. He is the reason they get a ring. Hey, look. I'm not going to take that away from him. I know that sounds selfish, but it's okay because Russell Wilson is still himself before he joins a team. It's the Kobe Bryant way. Kobe Bryant's like, look, I love to win. I want to win, but I also want to be the reason we win. So I'm not mad at that when I see that in Russell Wilson. But I am mad at this. The guy who had it good but wanted it better made it worse. Uh-oh. The guy who had it good but wanted it better Made it worse. Bar. God, that's a bar. That is that's a, a bar. bar. <laughs> hey, I've been there before. You just want, you just reach. My therapist talks about this. He said, Marcellus, one day we were in the middle of our session, and, you know, I'm paying a whole lot of money for these minutes. And I'm like, okay. We, he just paused. And I kept talking, and then he paused. And you know when you're in a Q&A or a therapy session, you're waiting for him to just take the baton, kind of like how we do. Mm -hmm. Like, when you finish, when you give us that last, <sighs> If I don't say anything, you're like, hey, bro, you didn't catch that cue? That was a social cue, homeboy. And I'm sitting there, and I did it twice to my therapist, and he ain't he ain't take it. The baton just dropped in the zone. I said, come on, man. And you know what he said? Marcellus, you've won. And I was sitting there like, what? He said, you've won. And I was like, what are you talking about? And he started going through my life, not just in accomplishment, but just in aspirations and things that I desired and the things that I am setting out to do. He was like, Marcellus, you won. He's like, that next rung on that ladder, be careful, man, because you may fall down or not appreciate how high you are. And I think Russell Wilson got caught with a little bit of that. Russell Wilson is continuously trying to grab that next rung. And I guess in a figurative sense, we all are. 
But in the literal sense, he tried to go to that extent where it actually hindered the progress of the collective. So if you're the Seattle Seahawks who's watching Russell Wilson right now go through what you said, which may be an identity issue crisis, you're wondering where's your leadership going to come from? We know it's Russell Wilson, but in what direction? Is it for just Russell Wilson or is it for the Seattle Seahawks? See that social cue right there? Now you're going to speak, huh? That's, <laughs> that's your point. <laughs> Bro, the guy who had it good but wanted it better made it worse. That's the bar of the week. That's the bar of the week? I don't care what you say the rest of the week. That's the bar of the week. No Thursday, no Friday. I'm off. <laughs> Russell Wilson has to prove that he's a playoff performer. Okay. That's what mm. he has to prove. Say yeah. something, say uh, with, something. With top three defenses, remember, Russell Wilson came into the league. Year one, best defense in the league. Year two, best defense in the league. God. Year three, best defense in the league. What? Year four, best defense in the league. Damn. Year five, third, best defense in the league. Stop playing. With those top three defenses, he started his career eight and four in the playoffs. Mm. Eight and four. Truly started his career eight and three with those top three defenses, but lost with the number three defense in that second playoff game. So however you want to look at it, Russ started eight and three or eight and four in the playoffs. But now... With average defenses, anywhere from 15 to 22 for the Seattle Seahawks, Russ is 1-3 in, in his last four playoff games. Mm. So I'm looking at you like, wait, Russ, of course you can win with a top five defense. Aaron Rodgers, the one time he had a top five defense, Super Bowl. Boom. Tom Brady, every time he has top five defenses, y'all look it up, he goes to Super Bowls whenever he has top ten defenses. Super Bowl, Super Bowl, Super Bowl, Super Bowl, Super Bowl. So if we're actually being really real, give any great quarterback – a top five defense, and they typically give you a Super Bowl in return. Oh, that's tough. Any quarterback. Just about. I, know, I, I just agree, about. but damn, it's hard to hear. Speaking, it's hard to hear. The one that actually threw me off, bro, Dan Marino had the number three overall defense one year, late 80s, I believe, yeah, yeah, with the yeah, Dolphins, yeah. and all he gave y'all was one playoff when yeah. I was up yeah, yeah, yeah. I was like, wait a second. Okay, move on. No wait Marino second, blast. I had, <laughs> I had to. I had to bro. No Marino oh, talk over here. That's but, negative. But as okay. of late, give mm. any top flight quarterbacks, facts, facts. a top flight defense, facts. and they will return you a Super Bowl. Mm. Rush, you had four number one mm. defenses with probably three Hall of Famers on your defense. Bobby Wagner, Earl Thomas, Richard Sherman, probably a bona fide three Hall of Famers on your defense for the first four or five years of your career. Mm. And all you returned was one Super Bowl. I say all because within the context of top five defenses and top tier quarterbacks, you usually get a greater return. So I'm looking at you now like, wait a second, Russ. Wait a minute. The tide has shifted. The seahaw seesaw has changed. You have more pressure on you than the defense did early on. What do you have to show for it? Because you're one in three in your last four playoff games. You're really one in four in your last five. But with top average defenses, you're one in three in your last four playoff games. Ooh. You have to prove that you are really that kind of playoff performer because I'll end it like this. Mm. Lamar Jackson struggles in the playoffs. We tear him apart. Yeah, y'all do. Dak Prescott, he struggles in the playoffs, one and two, if you want to define it as struggling, or he doesn't get to the playoffs. We tear him apart. Deshaun Watson struggles in the playoffs. We tore him apart. Josh Allen prior to this season struggled in his playoff appearance. We tore him apart. Mm. But Russell Wilson won in four in his last five playoff appearances, and we're like, ah, man, it can't be Russ. It can't be Russ. It's not Russ's fault. Uh. Russ, you got to show up, and we have to critique you in the same manner we do all the others. Say it, man. That likability is covering for Russell Wilson. And early, Russ wasn't like this. I love your bar. You kind of didn't focus on it, oh, but let me just highlight a bar you had in there. The seesaw of the Seahawks. Russ was down here at first, and the Seahawks were up here. And then Russ said, nah, B, let me, let me, let me, oh. And then the Seahawks went that way. Very interesting to illustrate it in that way. But also, let's talk about what we saw illustrated to us. This conversation was spurred off of what? A workout video. <laughs> Cam Newton style, you know what I mean? Uh -oh, is Russ biting Cam style? Last time I checked, Russell Wilson was a better quarterback than Cam Newton. Why are you trying to be like him? Interesting. I'm going to leave that alone. But a training day video with Wolves and DMX, rest in peace, songs in there, ain't going to change a damn thing, Russ, with those second half collapses. Ain't going to change a damn thing when you lose four out of your last five playoff games. So I love a workout video like the next man. <laughs> and I love it at the end when they brand themselves. I love it all. But the ball's not in the air right now. No one blew the whistle. It ain't the moment of truth where it's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's not when the defense is saying, I dare you to go methodically up and down this field, but you're still trying to be dangerous mm -hmm. and throw the ball down the field where there is nothing for you. So I look at Russell Wilson right now, and it's crazy, man. Is he still looking in the mirror, or is he really looking at the camera? 
the Hollywood lights and trying to make these videos to try and change his image. I want to change some of the performance of Russell Wilson more so than the image. But let's focus in on this video because I thought it was captivating. A, vi a video where Russell Wilson's a wolf now, right? Right? Don't wolves like hunting packs? Yes, they do. And, and, and if you hunting in the pack, you know what? I need you. You need me. We need each other. We don't do the blame game. Oh, we can't be the lone wolf. The lone wolf going to sit there and struggle. The lone wolf ain't going to have nothing to eat. But Russell Wilson wants to blame the old line. That's not what wolves do. Russell Wilson wants to go out there and blame the coaches, not letting them cook. That's not what wolves do. Matter of fact, I don't even know if Russell Wilson even wanted to be a wolf. Because last time I checked, he wanted to be a bear. Uh-oh, Chicago. Oh, last time I checked, he is a Seahawk. Oh, and last time I checked, it don't take no animal to go out there and get it done. Because there are pirates on land and sea, buccaneers. <laughs> ah, Seahawks, get out of here. You know what I'm saying? Looking for everybody. He told me he a wolf. This ain't on no wolf. The way he is acting right now just seems like he wants to put perception before reality. The reality is keep it low, Russ. Early Russ kept it low. This new Russ is blinded by those Hollywood lights, and I don't think he's seeing straight. I think, Sal, you bring up a point, and you made me think. I love this show because you bring up things, and I lose my notes. Same. Bump the notes. We're going somewhere. Ditto. Russ, you got to prove how high your high is, mm. sir. If we're being real, Russ, at your best, and a few other quarterbacks at their best, you're not as good. Now, I say a few other quarterbacks because let's go down the list. Golden. Josh Allen at his best. Thus far, is better than Russell Wilson has ever been at his best. Oh, you went there. And it's Patrick real. Mahomes at his best. Yeah. Thus far, is better than Russell Wilson has ever yeah. been at his best. Yeah. Lamar Jackson at his best. No. Thus far, is better than Russell Wilson has ever been at his best. Cam Newton at his best. Thus far, is better than Russell Wilson has ever been at his best. Mm. And you can say Tom Brady, and you can say Aaron Rodgers, mm. and you can say a litany of other people. The NFL isn't just about being consistently good. Mm. But if you are consistently good, can you catch lightning for a moment? Say you saw that with Carson Wentz and Nick Foles. Them cats ain't consistently good, but they caught lightning for a moment. That's why they have the same number of Super Bowl rings as Russell Wilson. Mm. So, Russ, we know how consistently good you are. You are, as far as consistency, probably the most consistent quarterback over the last decade in the National Football League. Okay. Probably Russell Wilson, Tom Brady, Brady. Aaron Rodgers. Now yeah. that Drew Brees is retired, et cetera. You're probably the most consistent quarterback in the National Football League over the last 10 years. Hmm. But how high is your high? We've seen vertical jump, y'all. <laughs> when you're doing your vertical jump, they get the bar up there, and you, you got to stretch your shoulder. What's your vert? What was your vert? 34, 5, 35, 5. Damn. And so they got to stretch the bar. You probably have it. You probably have it. You know I got you. <laughs> where were you I live up to the stereotype, damn it. Where were you? Black man can jump. Where were you? 39 and a half. Jeez, no wonder you in the second round. I see you. Must have uh, done a beat, bro. <laughs> so look, when you're testing your vertical jump, they put the bars up there, and they set them at a height, and they see how high can you touch. And what we know is this. Cam Newton has touched higher than Russell Wilson as mm. far as individual performances. Mm. Lamar Jackson is touched mm. higher than Russell Wilson as far as individual performances. Mm. Patrick Mahomes is touched higher than Russell Wilson. Josh Allen is touched mm. higher than Russell Wilson as far as individual performances. So, Russ, you also have to prove just how high you can touch at your highest high. I don't just need touchdown passes because touchdown passes, Russell Wilson, this past season came with your most interceptions. But talk to me about efficiency. Because oh. even Carson Wentz, his... MVP-ish season when he was 11-2 and two as a starter. <laughs> he only had 33 touchdown passes. Rush, you had 40 this year. But Carson only had a 77 passer rate. Or Carson only had seven interceptions. Rather. Seven, seven. Carson was top flight when it came to passer rating. So, Russ, it's not just about the gaudy statistics. Will you be the most efficient as you touch your highest height? Golly, man. All right. First, I'm starting to feel bad because I'm saying a lot of real stuff and sometimes real will slant you into negative mm -hmm. because there's so many glowing things you could say about Russell oh, Wilson, day. right? Uh, but I just don't like this version of Russell Wilson. And when I see him again, I'm going to tell him, not the biggest fan of this new you, but the old you I love. Now, you can still be the old you in persona and be the new you in terms of performance individually. But now let's merge those two and add one, which is make the collective, the team, start to feel all of the greatness you have in you. Now, Russell was sitting there like I used to feel. I used to be a victim in my mind. I used to blame everything around me. I'm blaming Crenshaw. I'm blaming Compton. I'm blaming my L.A. Unified School District. I blamed everything. Then I started to realize, wait a minute, because I used to hear one. Oh, she went to Harvard. Where'd she go to school, Crenshaw? Wait a minute. How'd she get through? And if she's an exception, maybe it's just because she's exceptional. So if you're exceptional, then there is nothing to hold you back. So I said, damn, the challenge is to be exceptional. 
Russell Wilson, are you exceptional or are you damn good? That's what you're sounding like you're saying. He's exceptional-ish, mm-hmm. and that's not good enough in the NFL. So when I see a guy like Russell Wilson, and as I used to be this guy, looking to blame the O-line, blame the coach, want to say everything and then recreate his image so that makes us think different of him, we're not thinking higher of him. We're thinking lower of him until this all starts to materialize. So... Danger Russ, the mouse, <laughs> is who he used to be, right? And then early in his career, he was a vulture. You know why? Because that defense went out there and killed everything. Yep. <laughs> and then guess what? That running game. <laughs> and then here comes Russell Wilson with his Seahawks vulture ass. <laughs> swoop in, get one ring. And then swoop in, almost get a second ring, and bam! And that's where I want to land. Russell, nobody really blamed you for that second Super Bowl loss. It's just crazy to me, ironic, that now he's going to take the blame torch and try and light everyone else up with something they didn't light his ass up with. Why is he going to that place right now? Because if people have that memory, then they can start to look at why you're not exceptional. Is Russell Wilson the most forgiven player in the National Football League? Oh, that's fact. Because you bring up, even just yesterday, that's facts. Um, the producers are reminding me when we're talking about Edelman's Hall of Fame debate that Wes Welker cost the Patriots a ring against the Giants with a pivotal drop. Mm. I'm like, oh, wow, that's years ago. Yeah. Russell Wilson, you literally... <laughs> Threw a pick huh. and cost your team the game. Like, literally. Like, it's That's not it. like a, any opinion. Uh, was it a bad one? No, 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 no. You literally cost your team. But you're right. We actually don't bring that factor up much at all. No. Nope. Russell, you're right. He might be the most likable and therefore the most forgiven player in the National Football League. Yeah, I love Russ. I love him. But I'm not in like with this version of him. But hopefully it all can come together in the happy marriage between Russell getting what he wants and the Seahawks getting what they want. Coming up, Trevor Lawrence is expected to be the first pick in the draft. But I'll tell you if he can live up to the hype in Jacksonville. Do the first. Kevin Durant went off last night, as usual. We'll tell you if he's the best player in the NBA when he's healthy. That's next on Speak for Yourself. You went off on the court or on Twitter? The Nets did not have Kyrie or James Harden or LaMarcus Aldridge yesterday, but they still had KD, and sometimes that's all you need. KD dropped 31 points on 11 of 15 shooting in Brooklyn's blowout win against the Timberwolves all after lighting people up on social media. Now, this was KD's most productive performance since late January after missing 23 games due to injury. We had to bring in NBA analyst C.B. Chris But, Marcellus, <clears throat> is Kevin Durant the best player in the NBA when healthy? Yes, and it's by far um, when healthy. Now, the problem is, he, damn, Chris Bassar, your face. <laughs> um, just because he hasn't been healthy long <laughs> enough and because uh, of the transition from team to team and everyone want to say he made a punk move and stuff like that has really taken us away from just the pure focus on how he impacts the game. Okay, so this is the best player with the greatest skill set today's game has seen. Just be real about it. The dude had a two-for-one access buddy pass in the talent line when God was saying, let me give out some of these talents. Let me give you height. I'm going to make you a seven-footer. Let me give you some of these handles. And let me give you the agility. And more so, a skill set that nobody else in the NBA possesses. He is purely built to play the game of basketball at the highest level. Now, I know there may be pushback. Everyone in their mind is thinking, LeBron James. And I say, yeah. But think about this. LeBron James looks like a tank. If you ever seen LeBron James, you would actually go to that place. Watching LeBron James, you would say the same damn thing. Get out the way. But there are two places, if I'm a defender on LeBron James, where I start to grow in confidence. With KD, there's not a single place on that court where I grow in confidence. I give it to you like this. LeBron James wants to go down the lane. You say, okay, hat LeBron, send him to the free throw line. Oh, I feel a little better. Or LeBron James is sitting there dribbling as the point guard. And all of a sudden, I say, let's push LeBron James further and further away from the basket. The further you push him away, the more confidence you grow in as a defender. Now, let's talk about Kevin Durant, damn it. (laughs) Where on the court are you going to put Kevin Durant and think that you have an advantage? More confidence on him. Oh, try to put him on the block. Kevin Durant just going to turn around. He's not even going to jump. He's just going to shoot over you on the block. Don't think that wiry frame is not built for going down in the paint. 
The further you push him away, the more he grows in confidence rather than you. He is purely built for the sport, and he has the greatest impact, including on the other end, with a seven-foot presence. Ask the Golden State Warriors about that when he showed his defensive prowess when they won their championships. All that adds up to LeBron James is right there. But Kevin Durant looks down at LeBron James and says, welcome to the heavens. <laughs> There's no way you mean that. There's no way you dared utter your lips to say that Kevin Durant <laughs> looks down on LeBron. The only way Kevin Durant looks he's down on LeBron James yes, is he's stature does. alone. He's literally taller. He's literally taller. That's literally a stature well, 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 alone. I meant it then. Damn it. Sale. <laughs> what? The problem is, in society, CB, let me tell you the mistake Sale made, and it's not his fault. Uh, rare. We, um, we don't interpret words very well. See, because you read, is Kevin Durant the best player in the NBA when healthy? And you translated that to... And is well. Kevin Durant the best scorer in the NBA when healthy? If you're going to say, is he the best scorer in the NBA when healthy, I say absolutely he's the best scorer in the NBA Go. when healthy. But as far as player, it's not just about getting buckets. Are you getting other guys' buckets? When you're talking player, last I checked, you got to play mm. both ends of the four. That's offensively and defensively. Now, if you just want to talk about contributing to scoring points, then LeBron James actually does that at a higher clip than Kevin Durant. Oh. Because when you talk about points scored plus points assisted on, because the world isn't selfish, nor is the NBA, <laughs> then LeBron James actually scores and assists on 44 points a game to Kevin Durant's 40 points a game. Now, while KD outscores LeBron 28 points a game to 25 <clears> points <throat> a game, it ain't just about score and sell. But the say bigger that. picture is... I said defense. Being a best player has to do with defense. So you telling me, and really I'm telling you, that LeBron James contributes to more of his team's points on the offensive end of the floor... But then LeBron James also contributes to the second best defensive team as far as efficiency in the NBA. So LeBron James contributes more offensively than KD, and LeBron James contributes more defensively than KD. Then how in God's name did you add two and two together and get six and a half? Marcellus Wiley. Kevin Durant does not look down on LeBron James in any way, shape, or form outside of stature. Because when it comes to basketball play, not scoring alone, basketball play, LeBron James is the undisputed GOAT. Oh. Well, I know he's a goat. I ain't saying well, I, I guess I'm the tiebreaker. And uh, let me start by saying this. Marcellus, that was good TV. Uh, <laughs> it was false, but it was good TV. <laughs> oh, All right. Stop it. I'm with Acho. And he made the point very well. And you, you, talk, you had me. You talked about, well, LeBron, you just filed him sending him a line. Who's <laughs> done that? Who, who's figured out the formula to stop in LeBron James? That's like saying, you know what? David Robinson, he can pass. He's more athletic. He's got more moves than Shaq. With Shaq, you just force him out and make him shoot a jumper. Okay, <laughs> who was able to do that? All right, Shaq had more impact. LeBron has more impact. So LeBron still is the best player in the world in my book. I'm going to throw out three guys, though, that I think now have an argument with Durant. And I before the season, I was LeBron one, Durant two, clear. Now, I think there are a few guys that can battle KD, and, and we'll see how the postseason goes. Maybe LeBron for that top stop. Number one, Joel Embiid. Number one, he rebounds better than Durant. He defends better than Durant. He's one of the best defenders in the league. And his mid-range game, I'm not saying he's Kevin Durant, like he said the other day, but his mid-range game is butter. Mm. He's shooting 47% on mid-range pull-up jumpers just like KD. All right? And then he's got something KD doesn't have, that dominant post game where he's getting to the line almost 12 times a game. So I think you got to throw Joel Embiid in there. Let me go to somebody else. <laughs> Kawhi Leonard. Mm -hmm. I got to throw Kawhi in the discussion now. Mm -hmm. Offensively, defense, defensively he's better than KD. Offensively, we know he's a mid-range assassin. So playmaking skills, about the same. The last guy I'm going to throw in this level, James Harden. Yes. Mm. It now has to right? become a discussion. <laughs> who's the best player right now, Harden or Durant? Because Harden can score just as well as KD. He's actually scored more when he had his own team. All right? But he also is a more versatile offensive player because he can play point guard like anybody this side of Magic Johnson. I mean, he can really be a true point guard and playmaker and lead the league in assists one game 
And then the next night you need him to drop 41 and he'll do it. I mean, that dude is awesome. And when you look at the Nets, the proof is in the numbers. With Kevin Durant and no James Harden, the Nets are seven and six, Hmm. 53% winning percentage. With James Harden and no Kevin Durant, the Nets are 20 and five, Hmm. 80% winning percentage. I'm just saying. Hmm. He on to something. You just he saying something. Let me just start like you started on me. Christmas art. That was bad TV. I'm going to tell you why that was bad TV. Because you went up there and said, James Harden, he's just awesome, dude. I don't want to hear how awesome he is. And look, we're splitting hairs with the A++ players of the league. Of course. Mine is Joel Embiid. Right. I don't know how the hell he got in this conversation. But go ahead. He doesn't play. Really? Well, I mean, look. If we're going to take small sample sizes and just want to extract everything out of it, yeah, Joel Embiid. But we need to see some meaningful gains from Joel Embiid in the playoffs consistently before we put him in the rare air with LeBron James, Kevin Durant, and even James Harden, who has played well of late in the playoffs but just doesn't have the crown on his head just yet. But wait for this year. We'll see. And obviously, but why has KD got the crown, Marcellus? That's a, why does KD why have, does the KD have, the have the crown? I bet because you he, if I put Harden in Golden yeah, State, yeah, 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 I bet you if I put Golden Harden State, in Golden State the last three years instead of KD, right. they win at least two. Well, he went to a team that won a championship. I bet you. And then they won two with him, and he became the best player on that team, showing that he wasn't just there riding the waves. He was making waves because Steph Curry even had to take a back seat to him. I digress. How did LeBron James get his first championship? He went to a championship organization that just won a few years before with Dwayne Wade and said, let me make a big three. Don't you do this because you know you're not going to do it by yourself in the NBA. That said, I got, first of all, let me, let me clear the decks. LeBron James is the GOAT. I love me some Michael Jordan. He's right there. If you want to argue that, fine. I'm walking out the barbershop. I'm not mad at you. I'm just not going to waste my breath. LeBron James, Michael Jordan, I get it. That's the GOAT to me. Now, when you talk about the best player right now, and that's considering health, That's considering, obviously, age. That's considering all factors of the game. Kevin Durant, if we went somewhere right now and had to have a draft, I told you this story before. I just wake up. I told you this story before about Max Kellerman, my dog, who said boxing critics get it wrong so many times, especially boxing judges. They'll watch around and sit there and argue. Who won that round? Who won that round? And Max broke it down this simple. He said, who would you rather be in the ring? That's who won that round. So right now, I'm going to Venice Beach with y'all. CB, fly from New York out here to L.A. Let's go to Venice Beach. We got a draft right now. You got MB, you got Harden, you got LeBron, and you got KD. I dare you to pick anybody before KD because my team going to whoop y'all You picking ass. LeBron. How you picking How you? LeBron? Because LeBron is a major Who guarding KD? Success. Who guarding KD? LeBron if he wants to. Boy, stop. He is the co- LeBron. You, Boy, you stop. You've seen it, Sal. No, Historically, no. You, you see have it. seen you it. See that. Who won? Wherever LeBron goes, won? LeBron wins. KD had to go Who to a specific destination. And so did LeBron. And so did LeBron. LeBron went to L.A., he won. He went to Cleveland, he won. He went to Miami, he won. LeBron what? didn't win. Did he, he win in L.A. without A.D.? Did he win in L.A. without A.D. and KD traded away the farm to get him? Did he? Did, KD, did he go to Miami? KD did, had to play with the greatest warrior of all and time. And became greater Adam than Lee. him. And became greater than him like that. CB, like, CB, like, I'm not going to argue with you. Yes, sir. I'm respecting y'all. So. KD. KD, I'll give you. He was the best yeah. player on those Golden State teams. Damn right he was. But Steph was the most important player. Oh, God. It was Steph's team. Ooh, back of the class I mean, comment Steph, is that. Steph was the most. <laughs> and, and, and they won at a high level without KD. Thank you. Yeah, I mean, KD had talent. You act like he was so playing Miami with won without with LeBron. LeBron. Miami won without LeBron. What you mean? What are we doing here? That that was, yeah, they had Shaq. <laughs> Well, that was like they, they had to wait. wait. Dog, we gonna do the same thing. We're that not. is a lateral argument. We're not, not going a, anywhere. It's not a lateral argument. So first off, the Miami team, the one without LeBron, won five years prior. The okay. Golden State okay. team, the one without KD, right. won two years prior. Okay, and went to one year prior. Okay, this, here the difference. Win. Here the difference. CB, let me set my dog straight. You yeah, know, this yeah. is my dog Marcel. So I got to speak to him respectfully. I can't raise my voice. I love you too. The Golden State team beat LeBron. Without KD. Mm -hmm. So the fact that they already beat LeBron without KD means they accomplished what KD accomplished prior to KD arriving on the scene. Mm. So the greatest thing KD has ever accomplished, beating LeBron James Uh. in the finals, they already accomplished Uh. without KD. CB. So KD's biggest chip 
Don't Somebody you, already did no. without him there. CB knows it's better than us. CB, don't you have uh, you have daughters um, in college or just graduated from Ooh. college? Correct. Yeah, I'm hot too. Uh, yeah. All right. So you <laughs> know just you know about the new grading scale because I grew up with a 4.0 as a grading scale, and then you start hearing these new kids talk about, well, I got a 4.4, I got a 4.5, and you're like, what the hell is that? And they're like, well, you know, I'm taking uh, college AP. courses and APs and all that. You know what the Golden State Warriors were getting before KD a 4.0, and then. And then KD showed up and said, oh, we're going to turn this into a 4.4, 4.5. They made it where it was not even a contest. And y'all not going to give Kevin Durant that compliment of him bumping that team up? That's the only thing. No shots at Kevin Durant like that when he joins a great team. Because when LeBron joins a great team, he expects the same thing as Kevin Durant. Why y'all focus on me? <laughs> Here's the thing, though, Marcel. CB. Wait, you, you look. I could have take, I, I could have taken Bradley Beal mm. and exchanged him for Kevin Durant. Mm. And the same thing would have happened. Mm. James Harden, Bard, the same oh, thing would have happened. Outplaying LeBron Bars. in the finals, Bars. when you gotta work, when the defense has to worry Bars. about Steph and Clay and Draymond. Were they gonna win it again? Oh, man. Were they gonna win it again? I'm not hey, trying to where, where, where KD, I'm point, just saying. Down. Where was the arrow pointing at that moment when Kevin Durant? Can I ask They were doubling, they were game. Where was the elevator before KD got there? Up or down? Down. That's why he went there. Second of all, what did did LeBron do without AD in LA? Right, you have you a need one help. Year Everybody size. get hurt. You have a one-year sample size of LeBron James in a day without a long as I got a, a sample size. A one-year sample size. You no can't problem. extrapolate from a one-year sample size and start work. talking about what ifs and what ifs. Good CB, work. you hit the nail on the head, big dog. You Maybe. could exchange KD with probably about 15 players in the NBA, and Golden State would have done the same. Thing. So that tells me it wasn't all that impressive. Damn, I can't now. wait for y'all to draft somebody else other than KD. All right, I got to move on transition and get this check. Uh, make sure you enter today's Fox Bet Super 6 NBA contest for a chance to win $25,000. I am really mad right now. <laughs> Download the Fox Bet Super 6 app and pick the outcomes of six of today's games for your chance to win. It's completely free to play. Coming up. Speaking of disrespect, Jimmy Garoppolo is the 49ers quarterback right now. But we'll tell you how we should feel with all the rookie quarterback chatter. That's next. Don't speak for yourself. Here y'all to pick somebody else. 49ers still have Jimmy Garoppolo, but they're expected to draft a quarterback with their number three pick. They had a front row seat at Justin Fields' second pro day today. And they also have been linked to Matt who? Matt Jones, Jimmy G's teammate Kyle Hughes, check, said, quote, I said that name right, I'm going to support who's ever under center, whether it's Jimmy or a rookie quarterback. I think either way, we're going to be successful. Oh, way to ride the fence, Bruh. Hughes, check. He ain't my teammate. So, Acho, how should that Jimmy just, G feel right that now? That just ran me so hot. Like, bump how Jimmy G should yeah. feel about all that. Yeah, let's he should be heated at Kyle Hughes check. It's that dude at the used like, car lot doing look, this. Don't, real talk. <laughs> don't be out here talking about, you know, either way, we're going to oh. be fine. Under the, if you don't defend me, oh. if you don't defend me, Jimmy G, your quarterback, I'm the one who took you to the Super Bowl used check. First off, why are you doing interviews? You're a fullback. Ooh. That's first thing. Well, first. you went to Harvard, so you're smart. That's fair. That's fair. Okay. But more importantly, like, okay. if, bro, if you don't defend, I, I that, <laughs> I know. I am with you, though. I'm hot. I'm, like, with I'm hot right there. I'm bro. with you. I'm with anyway, you. Anyway, let's go get it. How him. should Jimmy G feel? Jimmy G should feel betrayed. Yes. And he should feel betrayed because, like, if you do everything within your power for someone or to achieve something and y'all get to the highest of heights and they still look to replace you, it's like, come on, what else you want out of me? Mm. Like, real talk, what else you want out of me? Like, Jimmy G is saying by his play, we're 22 and 8. With me as a starter. With me. We went to the Super Bowl Everything with me as a starter. Me. When I'm out on the field, I ball. Furthermore, y'all going to make fun of me because I get hurt and I can't stay healthy. <laughs> but even within the confinements of locker room, I don't look at all injuries the same, so Because some injuries, contrary to popular belief, are preventable. Okay. Several soft tissue injuries. You pull a hamstring. You pull a quad. Mm. You pull a calf. That oftentimes can be preventable. How mm. hydrated are you? Yes. How stretched were you? How warmed up were you? But Jimmy G got an ACL. Jimmy G got a high ankle sprain. Like, his injuries actually could have happened to anybody. Some injuries, you like, come on, bro. Why didn't you hydrate before? Why was you out the night before the game? Hello. But Jimmy G, you actually looking at him like, yo, it's not even your fault, man. Like, your injuries were not even preventable. So Jimmy G should feel betrayed because he's doing everything he can within his power, took them to a Super Bowl, and y'all still looking elsewhere? Mm. I would be heated. I would be heated as well. 
Disrespected mm -hmm. is how I would feel if I were Jimmy GQ. First of all, if I were Jimmy GQ with all that money and looking like that Jimmy GQ, woo, it'd be a lot different. I don't know if I'll be here every day for you, Acho. But you know what? Disrespected Jimmy GQ, that's how he feels as a 49er. Um, I'm going to hit you with some Goody Mob. You know Goody Mob? Nope. Look at your eyes. They went blank. <laughs> uh, you know Cujo? Nope. No, you don't. He had a line. Frustrated. Irritated. Sometimes I don't know myself. I'll be too numb. <laughs> <sighs> that took me somewhere. Anyway, frustrated and irritated. Cal Shanahan, how dare you? I saved your butt. I did that. Me. Hey, did you just have a training day moment, Denzel Washington? Why? What do you do? You know what I mean? Oh, right, go ahead, go ahead. Go ahead. Uh oh, uh oh. Hit me off camera. <laughs> Call Russell Wilson first. We're going to talk about this. <laughs> All right, here we go. One in 10. Bruh, one in 10. And then all of a sudden I come, and then you know what? Our fortunes change. Well, let's forget about all that. Cal Shanahan, you've been there four seasons, losing one, two, three of those four seasons. So there's one season that's different. What was that season? The only season that Jimmy GQ was a full-time starter. Oh, and you call yourself the quarterback whisperer? Interesting. This same organization, how dare you look at somebody else? When y'all went five straight, losing non-playoff seasons before I said, let me do this for you 49ers. Oh, this is disrespectful. I'm going to talk about coaches because I, I, I really have to change narratives in society in general, but certainly in the sports world. Let's talk about head coaches that had at least three losing seasons in their first four years in the last 20 years. Let's talk about how it all turned out. Ty Bowles, fired. Gus Bradley, fired. Mike Shanahan, fired. Tony Sperano, fired. Dick Jerron, fired. <laughs> Romeo Cornell, fired. I'm getting tired of saying it. Mike Nolan, fired. Dom Capers, fired. Bush Davis, resigned. <laughs> he was like, you ain't gonna fire me. I'm out. <laughs> Jim Schwartz, fired. Jeff Fisher, fired. Robert Vera, fired. Hey, bro, let me tell you something. Kyle Shanahan, you think you're going to do this with somebody else? How come you haven't done it with anybody else just yet? You got other guys on the team. You tried a clown yesterday. C.J. Bether. Who is he? Third rounder. What, what round were you? <laughs> yeah. How to hit him with that nay nay? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, he went higher than you, Acho. Thank you, C.J. Bether. Mm, how that turned out. Brian Hoyer. Don't clown Brian Hoyer like that. He won 10 games in Cleveland before. Don't act like that. Mm. Nick Mullins. Okay, everybody could clown Nick Mullins. I'm with y'all. Let's clown. Let's clown. However, Nick Mullins went three and five first year in the system. Then the next year, no starts. And the next year, you would think if you working with a quarterback whisperer for a couple years, you would get a little better. Two and six. Wait a minute. Is Cal Shanahan really a quarterback whisperer? Because if you're a quarterback whisperer, like a dog whisperer, you want the hardest to train dogs because that's why you're a whisperer. You can go to anybody and go get them right. Like Bill Belichick, who's not even a whisperer to quarterbacks. This is hobby. He'll grab pick 199, turn him into a goat. He'll grab Matt Castle, make him win 11 games. What is Cal Shanahan, the genius, doing with other quarterbacks? Nothing. Only with Jimmy GQ. So he should be loyal to that guy. I mean, guy. let's not do all that, Sal. <laughs> let's not Stretch the truth. I did go too far. You did. Uh, <laughs> I love because it. Kyle Shanahan as a coordinator, which if we're being honest, a coordinator and an offensive coordinator and a quarterback coach spend more time with a quarterback True. most times than a head coach. Facts. So let's remind everybody, Kyle Shanahan is an offensive coordinator and quarterback coach. Let Matt Schaub to a Pro Bowl. He led Robert Griffin to a rookie of the year. Hey, coach. He led Matt Ryan to a Super Bowl hey, and an MVP. Hey, so let's just remember, Kyle Shanahan do still be whispering in these quarterbacks. But he's, he's a head coach now. Time. He's not that. You want him to take him back or yes. you want to go forward? Now that he is a head coach, we got to look at some things differently. Yes. However, Thank you. Jimmy Love G it. should feel disrespected. He should feel betrayed, but he should not feel nor be surprised. Mm. We said it yesterday, big dog in the NFL. Biggest things. Are you available? Are you accountable? Jimmy G is accountable, but Jimmy G is not available. Facts. Jimmy G has missed 44% uh, of the plausible starts he can make. He's only made 32 out of 57 starts. So, Jimmy G, while you should feel betrayed, mm. while you should feel disrespected, you can't necessarily feel surprised, big dog, because just because you're fighting your little heart out, just because <laughs> you're doing your best to, to display your love and affection for your significant other, it still might not be enough. Ooh. I recently learned, Sal. What you learned? 
Sometimes love ain't enough, big dog. How you know? You ain't never been in love. Oh, I watch the movies. <laughs> Sometimes love ain't enough, okay, big dog. Sound like a good song. Sometimes, Jimmy G, your talent alone isn't enough. Mm. What's up with your availability? Mm. So don't be surprised. Yes, you fighting your little heart out. You're punching your little heart out. You're doing all that good stuff. But sometimes your talent alone, your accountability alone is not enough. Where is your availability? And for that reason, yes, feel betrayed. Yes, feel disrespected. Okay. But don't be surprised. Well, uh, uh, forget all that. Forget all those, those variables and attributes. Forget all of that. This is an arrogant-ass draft pick. Like, you need other things on this team. This team was close. This team only showed its promise one time, and it was with who at quarterback? Him. Let's not go to the Sugar House. Where the Sugar House? Sugar House. Casino sugar House in Casino in Philadelphia. Yep. Is it in San Francisco too? Because, damn it, this is a roll of the dice to think you're going to be able to do it again with a high draft pick. It's too risky because everybody knows football is fickle. Mm -hmm. No matter who you draft, they could have injury issues in the NFL. Some of them already have injury concerns from the collegiate level. So why are you going to roll the dice on somebody else not only performing as well as Jimmy G in his only year as a starter, but also staying healthy. Let me say it like this. Please. Insurance. Insurance rates. Uh, you don't pay a high premium for the insurance. You know why? The whole purpose of insurance, if you got the good insurance, is to just price it at a rate that you're going to get it, but you're never going to use it. Think about it. So let's go get a second, third, fourth rounder who's not going to take Jimmy G's job. You're not going to be pressured into all of a sudden having to get rid of Jimmy GQ. And it's an insurance policy at its price. Number three overall? Sell. And then you're going to force Jimmy G out? That's too much for but me, let's bro. let's go there, big dog. Because you got kids. You have a daughter who had to go through the driving stages. You had to teach her how to drive, I'm assuming. She's still on your insurance unless she balling out there. Oh, insurance. And, uh, she on everything. Exactly, yeah, right? she need to be an adult. And so what you oh, know, because you've had to do it for yourself and for your dependents, is this. What? You get in a couple accidents, what happens to that insurance premium? It's going up. It's going up. All the way up. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing can stop me. So Jimmy G has gotten into a couple accidents. Oh, good point. ACL accident, oh, ah, I got oh, into a couple damn. accidents, Full high ankle sprain oh, accident. Oh, and when you get into a couple accidents, that premium goes up. Mm. And so what happened? They wanted to only use a fourth round pick on Jimmy G. Ah, ACL, okay, a couple of years might have to use a third. Mm. Okay, well, let's just use a third on Jimmy G. Ah, high ankle sprain. You know what? That premium went all the way up to now having to use a first round pick to replace Jimmy G. You know what happens to them premiums when them accidents happen, big dog? Jimmy G has gotten into one too many accidents, premium all the way. Trading multiple first round picks all to go get this question mark that's going to replace Jimmy G and nobody else has seen it out of Kyle Shanahan as a head coach and no other quarterback with Kyle Shanahan 7 and 27 with anybody else not named Jimmy G Q. Look, Dr. Dre said it best. I started this gangster shh and these are the thanks I get. Hello. That's how Jimmy G should feel right now. Kyle Shanahan without me, I don't even know if you would even be here. Coming up, can Trevor Lawrence live up to the hype at the number one pick in Jacksonville? We'll answer that next. Don't speak for yourself. Speak for yourself. Marcellus Wally, Emmanuel. Yeah, look at This tie is on flame. Admit it. Say it. It's nice. The tie bar's a little crooked, though. Damn, which way up? <laughs> Let's, hater. Let's move on to the NFL draft. He ain't lying. Where Trevor Lawrence, beast, is expected to go number one overall to the Jaguars in the NFL draft. Andrew Luck is considered by many to be the pre-draft gold standard at quarterback. And one scout said their skills are very comparable. Hmm, hmm, interesting. Lawrence talked about his pre-draft hype recently with Sports Illustrated saying, quote, I don't have this huge chip on my shoulder that everyone's out to get me and I'm trying to prove everybody wrong. Well, you never lost any games and you never won pick. Okay, I get it. So, Acho, can Trevor Lawrence live up to the hype in Jacksonville? Yes, sir, he can, but no, sir, not in Jacksonville. I had to be nice first. You know, people be so sensitive these days. Trevor Lawrence can and will live up to the hype of his career. Don't do that. But he's not going to do it in Jacksonville. Still, so 22 quarterbacks have been number one overall. Now, 22 quarterbacks have been picked number one overall in the last 40 years. Four have winning playoff records. John Elway, Peyton Manning, Eli Manning, and Troy Aikman. Remember, Eli Manning got to finesse his own situation. So really, that's three, three. of the 22 quarterbacks wow. over the last 40 years. Facts. This isn't some sort of like statistical thing that should marvel you. No, it's really relative common sense. <sighs> Uh -oh. Your success in life isn't exclusively dependent upon your talent level. Environment matters. 
Mm. Now, you can still succeed in a poor environment, but if you had that same level of talent in a environment conducive to success, you might succeed at a higher clip. Say it. So success <clears throat> is not exclusively dependent on talent. Environment matters. We see that at the quarterback position. Carson Palmer, he enjoyed some success in Cincy, but it was really when he went to Arizona with Bruce Arians that he enjoyed his greatest success, won more games than he had ever won, threw for more passing yards and passing touchdowns than he ever had. You just look throughout the course of history. Alex Smith, he enjoyed some success by his fifth or sixth year in San Fran. But when did he really enjoy his height of consistent success by record? I'm not talking about an NFC Championship game. I'm talking about by record when he went to Kansas City with the Chiefs. So you can just look historically at number one overall picks. They do enjoy their success. But oftentimes, they enjoy their highest level of success when they go elsewhere. So mm. is Trevor Lawrence going ball? He absolutely is going to ball. Mm. But is he going ball in Jacksonville? Mm. I'm not convinced. Man, you know I stopped listening to you because you start talking about my hood, my home. Duval, you know I used to live in Jacksonville. I ain't really play. <laughs> I like to tell people my last two years was a paid vacation, but I still got love for Jacksonville. And I got love for Trevor Lawrence living up to the hype in Jacksonville. Yes! Because first of all, what hype? <laughs> Who the hell is expecting anything out of Jacksonville? So everything that he does is going to hit. I remind you that Blake Bortles hit in Jacksonville. I remind you, Blake Bortles had in his second year, what was that, 35 touchdowns, 18 interceptions for Blake Bortles. He got Stop. a hit. He got a hit. Okay, he wait a minute. Hit. That was Blake Bortles. Yeah, that was him on the losing team. And then they went out there and won 10 games and had New England on them ropes. Remember that? They should have won that game, damn it. But Blake Bortles hit ish in Jacksonville. <laughs> you think Trevor Lawrence can't do it? You think he can't go out there and make something happen out there with low expectations? Let me tell you about expectations, because you love to harp on that. Expectations is what you should judge somebody by. And I'm like, man, what the hell? I don't care what other people think about me. But I do equate expectations to light. And it's like the sunrise. It's bright compared to the night, but not as bright as high noon. Think about it when you first wake up and it's dark and you see sunrise. I hope you're up that early. Sunrise, I'm preparing. Sunrise, <laughs> I'm getting right. Sunrise, and you're like, oh, I don't wanna look. It ain't that damn bright. It ain't high noon, but guess what? That little light right there is gonna be something that could be blinding based on the expectations and more so based on their circumstances. Now, you start to roll and snowball because you have a Tremendous talent at quarterback, most important position. And all of a sudden, he looks around and says, do I have any talent? You know a quarterback, young quarterback, what do they need? A running game, right? Do they have a running game? They do. Oh, they do. You know what? James Robinson in the building. You know who James Robinson is? I bet no show has ever talked about James Robinson until this moment. Everyone talks about Jonathan Taylor, right? But James Robinson was the other rookie running back that went out there and rushed for 1,000-plus yards. Him and Jonathan Taylor. So there's a little to build on in Jacksonville as that sun continues to rise. Got to bring in Fox NFL analyst Bucky Brooks. So, Bucky, can Trevor Lawrence live up to the hype in Jacksonville? Absolutely. And I'm, I, I got distracted because you were talking about lights or whatever, and all I could think about was, this little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. And I think that's what Trevor Lawrence is going to do when he hits Jacksonville. When he gets to Jacksonville as the number one overall pick, he gets there and it coincides with the arrival of Urban Meyer. And so when you're trying to change a culture, it is easier for a coach to change a culture when the number one player is also in lockstep with what you represent. So when I think about Trevor Lawrence, I think about a few different things. One, he's a five-star player. He has outstanding arm talent, great athlete, tremendous IQ, mm. terrific playmaking ability, and he's super competitive. 30.2 as a starter in college, going all the way back to high school. All he's ever done is win. His poise is undeniable. He's unflappable. He's been a guy that's been celebrated and hailed as the number one quarterback since he was a mid-teenager. So the stage isn't too big for him. The mm. lights aren't too bright. Mm. And when I think about this situation with Urban Meyer, because I think you guys brought it up. I can't remember. Maybe Adjo brought up Troy Aikman or one of the only yep. guys to be able to do to be a number one pick and rejuvenate it. He is the Troy Aikman to Jimmy Johnson as Trevor Lawrence mm. is to Urban Meyer. Two very successful people getting together, collaborating. But for this to happen, they have to acquire the three P's, meaning it has to be about the protection up front, the Jacksonville Jaguars offensive line 
It's solid. It has to be about the playmakers. We can talk about some of the guys that they already have on the outside. DJ Chark, a second-year player, LaVisca Chenault. They brought over Marvin Jones. And then it's about the play caller, Daryl Bevel. Remember, Daryl Bevel is the former offensive coordinator of one of Acho's favorite guys, Russell Wilson. He actually was the offensive coordinator when Russell Wilson helped the Seattle Seahawks win a Super Bowl. So all of the things are in, pay, are in place for this environment to allow Trevor Lawrence to be at his best and this team to play well as a result. That sounds great, and you made that sound very <laughs> well, um, as eloquently as you said it. But, Bucky, if you're standing on top of a chair and I say, hey, Bucky, pull me up, you will struggle. But if I'm standing on the ground as you stand on top of a chair, it will be much easier for me to pull you down. Because it's always easier to be pulled down in life than it is to lift somebody up. So, Bucky Brooks, when I look at the Jaguars, who have lost yes. 10 games in nine of their last 10 seasons, at least 10 games, I say, wait a second, it's easier for them to pull Trevor Lawrence down. When I look at the Jaguars, who have the worst record in the NFL over the last three seasons at 12 Damn. and 36, I say, wait a second, Buggy, it's easier for the Jaguars to pull Trevor Lawrence down. When I say the Jaguars haven't been to a Super Bowl in their 26 years of existence, mm. I say, wait a second, Bucky Brooks, it is easier for the Jaguars to pull Trevor Lawrence down. It's not that Trevor Lawrence is not excellent. Let's make no mistake about that. It's not that Urban Meyer hasn't proven to be an excellent coach. But in life, personal life, romantic life, spiritual life, emotional life, in football, mm. it's easier to be pulled down than it is mm. to lift somebody else Ooh. up. Trevor Lawrence going to have a hard time lifting them Jags up, y'all. Mm. Oh, you look, he may have a hard time. And I'm sure one day you sat at the dinner table, your mom and dad told you, hey, you have to be weary of the crabs in the bucket. Mm -hmm. They'll always pull you down. And I'm sure sometimes in your life, the haters were at you, but you found a way to overcome it. Here's what's beautiful about this situation. You have a brand new situation being created in Jacksonville. Out with the old, in with the new. New coach, new general manager, new quarterback, new ideology, new thoughts, new processes. You're bringing in new players. You have a wealth of draft capital to completely mm. reinvent the Jaguars as we know it. Marcellus has been down in Jacksonville. He yeah. understands what Duval represents. Mm. And he also understands, man, this city is clamoring. They're desperate for a winner. Trevor Lawrence is the ultimate winner. He won as a freshman a national title. He has consistently been in the mix and had his team in the conversation to be a national titleist. I have the utmost confidence that the success that he was able to have at Clemson will continue when he lands in Jacksonville. Say it again, Bucky, with your new money. I see that new suit. I see that new studio. I see all of these checks cashing. It's not, it's not, it's not. It's not, it's not. You know what I mean? That PPE check coming in, whatever the hell they call them things. Um, look, Bucky, stop. You ain't got to tell me twice. Acho ain't listening. It's all good. He, he did drop a bar in there. I'm going to have to steal that as a Wileyism. But the point is, don't tell me twice about Jacksonville and Duval and the expectations and how you will be celebrated by not even doing everything you should. Like, look, we know they haven't won a Super Bowl. Acho pointed that out. But I remember when uh celebrated when we just made the playoffs and battled the Patriots. Like, people are like, that's what we're talking about out here in Jacksonville. But that's how you build when you're talking about Jacksonville. Acho needs to put a little more respect on Jacksonville and the Jaguars. Because if I came up here taking shots at Nigeria, Acho, if I came up here taking shots at Dallas, where you from, and you act like you ain't from, ah, Joe, you might have a little word or two to have with me after the show. But you know what? You're going to sit here on live TV in front of the world's view and take a shot at my old hood and my own home when I'm talking about Get a Jacksonville. Thing, no, Sal. Ain't Get no a thing, thing. No, there's a thing. Put some respect because on the video. I would rather take a shot at where you're from than take a shot at your credibility, Sal, because I've been holding on to a bullet this whole show. Because Marcellus Wiley came up and told me, Bucky Brooks, that he had a 38 and a half or a 39. 39 and a half at Pro I, I, Day, 35 I at the but Combine. The thing, I know the what I did. The big guy in the sky, it don't lie. What? So a sound from above said, wait a second. Marcellus Wiley per an I article said that. had a 35 <laughs> and a half inch vertical. Don't let him lie to y'all, America. He's trying to lie in this block, and he tried to lie in that last block, too. But the truth, <laughs> the truth shall set you free. No, he ain't. No, y'all ain't going to dust my credibility up. Your Honor, may I interject? Your Honor, everybody.
everybody sit down in the courtroom. <laughs> sit your, hey, bailiff, chill. Hey, let me tell you this. What's Justin Fields doing right now? A pro day uh, at the combine, 35 and a half. Pro day, 39 and a half. I wasn't as nervous. I was at home. I was comfortable in Jacksonville. Oh, uh, let me talk about my bench press. Just, y'all want to talk about it? I did 28 at the combine. He's 35 on my pro day. He gonna keep lying. I'm lying to y'all. Hey, but, coming up, <laughs> the Patriots do not have a top 10 draft pick, but they could change that. Yeah, we'll yeah. tell you, Belichick could, should consider moving up time, y'all. for a quarterback as long as they're not lying about things. <laughs> Welcome back. The Patriots have the 15th pick in the NFL draft, but that does not mean they're going to stay there. Our own Peter Schrager says Bill Belichick could make a move that, quote, rocks the NFL by trading up for the number four pick to possibly choose Justin Fields. Keep in mind, Mm. Cam Newton is back in New England for year two. Now, Bucky is back for segment two, but Marcel is you up first. Should Mm. Bill Belichick consider moving up to draft a quarterback? No, 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 no. He should not. Justin Fields at his pro day, probably doing a higher verdict. Not let me stop. No, he should not at all. Look, you got to have conviction. Conviction in this situation. And this situation reminds me a little bit of what's going on in Philadelphia with the Eagles and Jalen Hurts. And it also reminds me of what's going on in San Francisco and the 49ers and Jimmy GQ, where the coaches, the franchise, the organization needs to have conviction and trust that they have the right quarterback versus, oh, let's go out there and get this high premium insurance policy at the same position. Cam Newton is the quarterback for the Patriots this year and should be for the future. Let's be real about this. I want to see everybody up here right now because I'm looking at former football players. And God, I love doing this show with athletes because we speak that language. And you guys all know about the ability that we possess as athletes to self-correct within a football game. I love when I went out there in the first quarter and I had to go against Jonathan Ogden or something. I said, ooh, not too many people could deal with my dent move, my rip move. And I know even Ogden, he's better than me, but I'm going to give him my best. And in the first quarter, you hit him with that move and it doesn't work. But the ability to self-correct in the third, fourth quarter, maybe you catch him slipping or maybe he's just better in that moment and it works. And the fans say, celebration, good game. And you are actually internally thinking about the distance that you travel from that first quarter to the fourth quarter. Now, here's what I'm thinking that's happening in Bill Belichick's mind. And I'm hoping, I'm praying that the genius Belichick himself is not going to fall victim to over correcting. Ah, self-correcting one thing, overcorrecting. That means you're going to do too much. That means you're going to do it for everyone else's reception. That means you're going to go out there and draft somebody just because everybody said you should draft somebody. No, 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 no. Bill Belichick, we understand last year y'all had a lot of issues the entire season, and we can list them all. But guess what? Belichick, it's a new go-around. It's a new rep. It's a new opportunity. It's a new season. And what you have now in terms of roster and talent and at quarterback is enough to work to beat Ogden in that fourth quarter. So, Belichick, don't overcorrect. Don't do too much. You've done enough. You went on a spinning spree. Trust in what you got and just self-correct within. I like story time. I always like a Marcellus Wiley story time. But let's get back to reality. And the reality is Belichick should move up to draft a quarterback, especially if he can get the quarterback he wants. So what? Even if Cam Newton is a quarterback of the present, he's not the quarterback of the future. Why not? He's 32. Please, please. He's 32. Yes, a Tom Brady type who's been hurt once in his career over the course of 20 careers let's play until he's 44, 45. Cam Newton is struggled to the finish line of 32 to play in the NFL. It is a very different 32 Cam Newton feels mm. than the 32 that Tom Brady was feeling when he was 32. But mm. I digress. <laughs> um, we've grown far too uh, uh, friendly with the misnomer that you can find a great quarterback anywhere in the draft. You could. In the olden days, and olden days, I really just mean like eight or so years ago. Oh. Russell Wilson Russell Wilson was a third-round pick. Tom Brady, a sixth-round pick. Even Drew Brees, a second-round pick. But in this day and age, the best young quarterbacks, they were all taken early. What do I mean? Patrick hmm. Mahomes, he was taken in the first round. Josh Allen, taken in the first round. Lamar Jackson, taken in the first round. Uh, every time you look at these good young quarterbacks, Deshaun Watson, Taken in the first round, all of the elite young 
quarterbacks were taken in the first round. Now, here is the caveat, Bill Belichick. None of those quarterbacks were taken top five overall. Okay. Meaning they were the third or fourth, maybe even fifth, like Lamar Jackson quarterback selected. So you might not have to move all the way up to four and up. replace the Falcons at that fourth slot and draft a quarterback. But you definitely will likely have to move up. And if the opportunity presents itself where you can go get the quarterback you want, understand, this isn't Tom Brady's 1999 NFL where you might find a gem in the sixth round. This really ain't even Russell Wilson's NFL where you find a gem in the third round. Keep in mind, the jury is still out on how much of a gem Dak Prescott is. So I know y'all at home, well, Dak Prescott was a fourth-round pick. He's also went into the playoffs, and he also hasn't accomplished all that much. But anyway, I digress. <laughs> if you want to draft wow. the quarterback you need, wow. Bill Belichick, go ahead and move up. I can't stand you. Oh, man, man, the, the Dak hit is always The Dak hit. Here's what I'll say. Mm. Here's what I'll say. The... Patriots are undergoing a makeover, a makeover not only on the field, but off of the field and the way they approach doing things. We see, we've seen all of the moves that they've made to really rebuild this team. All the free agents that have come over to fix the defense. We saw them go back and bring back Cam Newton. The reason why it makes sense for them to move up to number four is because they've kind of gone all in on this Cam Newton athletic quarterback thing. Well, if we're going to do it that way, why not go all the way and bring in Justin Fields mm. to take the baton from Cam and really carry it on? Because the other thing that we have to understand about Bill Belichick, one of the, if not the greatest defensive mind that we've seen in the NFL, he is looking around the NFL and he's looking around the AFC. And what does he see? Patrick Mahomes, an athletic playmaker that is getting it done. He looks at Josh Allen within his own division, another athletic playmaker that is getting it done. He's looking at... Lamar Jackson, seeing how Lamar Jackson's athleticism causes problems for everybody. And he now understands the old way of doing things, the way that we did it with Tom Brady in the early 2000s and those things. We're not going to be able to play with a traditional quarterback. Let's go all in on the movement and do it like we've never done it here in New England and give us a chance to reclaim the title that is rightfully ours. Man. It's rightfully feel ours the last 20 years. Come on, Bucky. Come on, Bucky. Don't get brand new up here. I know you're in a brand new studio with a brand new suit, but don't you act brand new. We got enough of this Dak hate up here from Acho. Don't let me hear some Cam hate coming from Bucky right now because Cam, let me just give y'all some credit. Cam is good enough, but can Cam be great enough is the conversation at 32. If this were to hit, you got something and runway in front of Cam to make it all manifest. Don't act like a quarterback can do it by himself. Cam Newton went out there and had the highest touchdown percentage of all players on a team where his weapons were Jacoby and Myers, I mean a law firm, whatever the hell that is, <laughs> and Demir Bird. Give him the bird. So he had no weapons right now. And he still went out there and gave you 21 total touchdowns. Still gave you only 10 interceptions and caught the COVID, caught the Rona, and still went out there and gave you something. So if I'm Bill Belichick and I'm looking at Cam Newton, it's like Puffy and Biggie. Rest in peace, man. Yo, the sun don't shine forever, but as long as we're here, then we might as well shine together. Damn, I'm hyped. Okay, let me stop. Since 1990, I'm going to do an odd show right now, talk with my hands. 53 quarterbacks have been selected in the top 10. I'm going to talk about them. And only four have been first team all pro. Only four since 1990 and 53 were picked? This is the odd show stat. Peyton Manning, Matt Ryan, Patrick Mahomes, and damn, that damn Cam. And y'all gonna give up on him right now to go out there and get Justin Fields or whoever you want when you've already addressed many of the needs that surround the quarterback that are necessary for you to go out there and play winning football. I remind you of this stat for head coaches. There are only three head coaches to win a Super Bowl with two different starting quarterbacks, Belichick, Brady, and now Cam. And all of them took at least four years to do it. Parcell, Seifert, and Joe Gibbs. Y'all put some respect on Bill Belichick and more importantly, some runway in front of him and Cam so they can self-correct, not what y'all are suggesting, which is overcorrect. Damn, I'm I mean, my goodness, you, you, you made my point for me. No, I didn't. You just said that only three coaches have been able to do it with two starting quarterbacks and it took them four years. 
So I'm going to take it to you in terms that you can understand it. Mm. Because I'm assuming that one day you ran on the big man relay. Mm. So you're the big man <laughs> on the relay. And what we're doing, we're simply asking Cam Newton, hey, dog, hey, your times and your splits have been a little slower. So this is what we're going to do. We're going to move you from anchor leg to third leg. To and we're going to let Justin leg. Fields carry that thing Hiding over. That thing. So now what we're going to do oh. is Cam Newton is going to get him for the first two years. Then Justin Fields is going to be sitting there. Right in the zone. Wait, Stick. come on, dog. Bring it to me, dog. I'm going to carry you over the line. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> you leave us through that thing. Four years. So that's what we've done. Oh. Two years with Cam, two years with Phil. I like that. And then we get no, one of them I like shiny that. No. No, no. No, I don't like that because, you know, first of all, you're talking to a national record holder and a national <laughs> champion on a relay as well. And let me tell you one I thing. Don't know. I don't know if you're combine stats. I don't right. know. I, I don't know you what you lying, about. Buggy. I don't know what you're I'm going to bring in numbers and stats and pictures for y'all. Y'all silly. All right, here's the real. You got me there. All right, here's the real. We ain't even talking about the other legs that put you in position to win. And think about it. Belichick, if you're looking at Cam like, hey, dog, I don't know about your splits right now. If I'm Cam, I'm like, one, won't you address everything else before the baton even gets to me? And two, when it's on me, I remember one year, I used to run in socks. Y'all remember those little baby socks that had a little pom-pom on the back? I don't know why. I, uh, I like some cheerleaders. I thought they were cool. It ain't work. And then one year, no lie, saying ye can hell. Respect. I don't know where you at, bro, but he was a living legend as a, as a little young run runner. Saying ye can used to run with long socks. Tried that one year. Then one year, I finally said, take your socks off, Wiley. And you know what I did? Balled the hell out. Set records. Feeling it all. This is a different situation. All I'm saying is address within Cam Newton. I got the highest touchdown percentage, coach, with nothing around me. Coach, address the other legs of this relay. You have done that. Now let's go out there and hit the starting blocks. Now let's go out there and run this race. I guarantee you we'll set some records. Coming up. Mm. The Mavericks are not happy at all about the play in tournament. Oh, I like that. I heard you, Hacho. We'll tell you if we have a problem with Mark Cuban's criticism. That's next on Speak for Yourself. Let me tell you. The Mavericks are currently the seventh seed in the West. And in the playoffs started today, they'd be in the play in tournament. Oh, that started last season in the bubble. Y'all remember that? Well, that does not sit well in Dallas. Luka Doncic said earlier this week that he did not understand the idea of a play-in format. His boss, Mark Cuban, said, the worst part of this approach is that it doubles the stress of the compressed schedule. Rather than playing for a playoff spot and being able to rest players as the standings become clearer, teams have to approach every game as a playoff game to either get into or stay in the top six since the consequences, as Lucas said, are enormous. Chris is back with us, but Acho, do you have a problem with Mark Cuban criticizing the play-in tourney right now? I don't, fellas, because anything worthy of criticism is worthy of the criticism regardless of the time. Regardless of the time. Oh, I said regardless. Uh, regardless, that's a new word. That's a new word. That's a <laughs> Texas word, word, not Columbia. New, um, new word. No, nah, I don't have an issue with it, big dog, because Sorry. how you going to play 82 games or in a shortened season play 72 games and then still have to go play some more games to decide the best eight teams in each conference. It makes no sense. The playing games are actually undermining the regular season games. You already got enough undermining the value of the regular season. You got superstar players sitting out for load managerial type of reasons. So you dealing with that, then on the flip side, you're going to have more play in games when you already got to play 82. Keep in mind, of the major sports, look at where basketball ranks as far as the percentage of teams that go into the postseason. In basketball, you got 16 teams going into the postseason. That's only 30 teams. That's more than 50%. So what that means is the regular season has lost a little bit of its value because it doesn't take as much to get into the postseason. Now, Mark Cuban is sitting here looking like, wait a second now. Wait a minute. You already got to play 82. Now you're going to make us play playing games. What's the point of the 82? Furthermore, we have to play two game seven or three game seven caliber of games just to get to the playoffs because a play in game is a single elimination at times game. So how you going to make us play all them games just to play two to three game seven caliber of games just to get to play games to try to win a championship? It doesn't make sense. I respect Mark Cuban for his thoughts. Acho, everything you said made sense, and, and certainly that's a great point. Uh, I like to play in game for, games for the thrill of it, but you're right. I mean, you play 72 or 82 games, that's really enough to determine who the best eight teams are. 
So that was fine what you said. The problem is Mark Cuban is being hypocritical and self-serving. Mm. Because before the season, he voted for the play-in tournament. Because he didn't think his team would be in the seventh or eighth <laughs> slot. <laughs> Remember, when they last year they finished seventh, but they were coming up. You know, they were a young team. Everybody felt like they were going to get better. They played the Clippers tough in a six-game series in the first round. So Cuban, like everybody else, is thinking they're going to be a top four or five seed. So they don't have to worry about the plan. So sure, it sounds like a good idea. Make extra money for the league. I'm cool with it. Now that his team is in the seventh slot and looks like they are going to be in the play-in tournament, he's got a problem with it. You know how I know he's being hypocritical? Mm. Because the, we showed the one quote by him, but what he also said was we should have just went one through 20 and let the bottom four teams play in, have a play-in tournament. Huh. See, what he's talking about there in that quote is in this, on the screen is that, oh, it adds to the stress of the players. We already play in a condensed schedule. Now you got to really go hard the last few weeks because you're playing for a top six seed. Okay, but before that, he said they should have made it one through 20. Forget the conferences. Best 20 records in the league, regardless of conference, and then the bottom four after the top 16, <laughs> they do a play-in. If you went by that format, Dallas would be number 10. Okay, they would be, they got the 10th best record in the league, yeah. so they wouldn't be in the play-in. So he don't have a problem with the play-in tournament as long as the Mavericks aren't in it. If they went 1 through 20, Dallas is number 10. We don't have to worry about the play-in. I'm good. But, oh, you want to do it east-west like the NBA always has. Now we're the seventh seed. We got to play in the play-in tournament. Now he has a problem with it. It's hypocritical and self-serving. Mm, CB, I heard you screaming from the mountaintops. And, yes, I am going to join that chorus. He got caught. Man, it is hypocritical. It's whiny, actually, the timing of it especially because – we look at this situation and now it's starting to impact you and you're looking at it differently versus when you thought it wouldn't have an impact on you. Kind of takes me back to uh, voting time. You guys all know when we all vote. And most people, you say, you voting this year? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And everybody thinking about the president. But nobody thinking about the local, the state level. How about all them damn propositions? Proposition 187. You don't even know what the hell it is. You're reading it in five seconds in the movie. You're like, I don't know. All right, yes, no, whatever. And you vote for something. You're like, this ain't going to hurt me, whatever. And then you look around a couple months later, you're like, wait a minute. What is going on around me? What is going on to me? What is impacting me? And they're like, you remember that vote on Proposition 187? It passed. Whoa. And now you want to change everything up. That's how Mark Cuban sounds right now. It's all good when it's good to you. But when it ain't good to you, you want to switch it up. Mark Cuban, you got caught slipping in this situation. I don't like also that he's prioritizing his view of his schedule based on rest at the end of the season versus work. Like, why would you want to do this? Not only as an owner of a franchise, but a part of the board of governors. You're basically saying, yeah, um, y'all taking away my nap time. Y'all taking away the time we get to rest. And everybody else is like, is that how you prioritize your season, your scheduling? Like, we're already dealing with a load management issue. And then now, because the NBA has put rules in place where you can't load manage, you know what's happening now? I tell you, fans, damn it. When we used to play and we didn't want to practice, we used to come up with vague injuries. We used to say hamstrings. Y'all notice how many sore hamstrings this year? A lot of hamstrings on the Brooklyn Nets, right? And then we used to say, my back. Good luck trying to find out where the pain is with my hamstring and my back. That's what's going on right now. So everybody is taking their timeouts in different ways. It's sad to see, even from the top, that they want to take a timeout as well. But, fellas, let's be real, because everything you said, CB, was perfectly accurate, dead on sale. Everything you said was accurate and dead on. But this can also be true. Hypocrites can have a point. Mm -hmm. You feel me? Like, I'm, I'm Mark listening. Cuban is, in fact, a hypocrite. I'm not going to deny that, CB. I'm not denying that at all. I'm listening. But just because you're a hypocrite don't necessarily mean you have a point. What's this you point? can tell somebody not to do something that you do, which makes you a hypocrite. But your advice on not doing whatever you are advising that person not to do could still be very wise. That's so true. I'm not going to argue 
if Cuban's a hypocrite or not, because CB, you dead on, he is. You laid out all the facts, you read them as rights. So you did the same thing. But I don't think that takes away from the point Mark Cuban has. And the point Mark Cuban has is, why are we playing playing games at a time when we should be able to ease into the playoffs as opposed to ramp it up? CB, I don't know about your track and field prowess, but this oh. is a track and field show. Damn right. So, Sal, you know this. What do you do right before a big race, a week or two before? You taper. Yeah, yeah. You taper before the Olympic Games or you taper before a championship race because you know the big event is coming up, so you ease up your training. All tapering is is easing up your training. Mark Cuban is saying even the greatest of athletes taper. But how come y'all about to make us rev up before we have to rev up, it doesn't actually make any physiological sense, mm. nor does it make any psychological sense. Is he a hypocrite? Yes. But can hypocrites have a point? Yeah, they can too. All right. Okay. Good fight. But here's what I like, though, about the play-in. And I'm with you. If they didn't have it, fine. You had 72 games to earn your spot, right? But right now, we're going to get Steph in the playoffs, at least for a couple games, because of the play-in. We might get Zion. We might get Russell Westbrook and Zach Levine in the East. Like, And it's going to be ur a sense of urgency because it's almost like a March Madness. You know, it's a, a one and done for the lower seed and two and done for the higher seed. So I think it's going to add excitement. I feel you. You made a lot of sense, Acho. But at, even in baseball, where they play 162, and then they'll have that one game wild card sometimes. That's an exciting game. So I think it's good for the fans. It adds excitement. And yet then I still get my full seven-game series once the real playoffs begin. Yeah, but the, the playing games average a 7% bump in terms of ratings. How about the last regular season game when we saw the Blazers go against the Nets? Most watched final regular season game in 11 years. Like, let's think about it in terms of money as well. It's a pandemic, damn it, and you voted for it, damn it. We all have to adjust, damn it. What's the problem? Like, it's not about his hypocrisy fully. It's also about it's beneficial, and it's just an adjustment. If you don't want it going forward, how about you vote against it next time? Coming up, it's the tale of two quarterbacks in different cities. We'll tell you Sam Darnold or Carson Wentz has more to prove. That's next on Speak for Yourself. Carson Wentz and Sam Darnold are both getting a clean slate next season. Wentz was traded to the Colts, and he'll already have high expectations. His new squad is projected to win over nine games, according to Fox Bet Sports Foot. While Darnold said the trade talk was driving him insane, and he is relieved to be in Carolina with the Panthers. Mm. So, Marcellus, who yep. got more to prove? Is mm -hmm. it Sam Darnold or Carson Wentz? Carson Wentz. Um, they both don't have a clean slate. I mean, I know that you had to read that because it was in teleprompter, but hell no, it's not a clean slate. And Carson Wentz understands this. Dog. He doesn't have the same amount of leash as Sam Darnold does. Let's talk about why he doesn't. One, he's older. Two, he already had a big contract. So we already like, look, you already been up there and had success. But then what happened after that success? You messed it all up. What are we talking about here? We're talking about a guy who was traded for bad performance that created a bad situation that got rid of his head coach and then showed bad character, therefore forcing the trade. A few years after winning the Super Bowl that you didn't even finish the deal with. And then you wanted to take your deflated ball and want to go home. Oh, man. So now we see Carson Wentz. Yeah, it's kind of like this situation. You ever go into any relationship, any friendship with someone who reputation precedes them and it's not positive. I know I am the type of person that will say, I'm going to give them a chance. I'm going to give them a fair chance. But guess what? As soon as they show me a sign of what I heard before, yeah, I gotta go. Because as my preacher, my bishop, Noel Jones said, you gotta be slow to hire, but quick to fire. And guess what? When I see you, I'm like, all right, I don't really want Carson Wentz. Okay, we give you a second, we give you a third. Okay, slow to hire him, right? But as soon as I see that bad 2020 version of Carson Wentz again, oh, they're gonna be quick to fire. So yeah, Carson Wentz, he understands, not that much leash. I'm surprised that quote came from your bishop. That don't sound like a bishop quote. Slow you don't know Bishop Noel Jones, Jones, do you? <laughs> I mean, I mean, we run different in our church. <laughs> we roll different. I'll say this. Um, Sam Darnold has a lot more to prove than Carson Wentz, a whole lot more to prove. Stop, Carson stop. Wentz has to prove he can be good again. Sam Darnold has to prove he can be good, period. 
Ooh. And I think that's a huge difference. I like, like you feel me? Like what church you go to? I like that. I like that. <laughs> that was pretty good. Like Carson Wentz, he only got to prove he can go back to being good. But we look at Sam Darnold, and oh, oh. right, you ain't never been good statistically. Thirteen and twenty-five is your record. Look at Sam Darnold since he came into the league. Oh. Completion percentage, touchdown interception ratio, passer rating, yards per attempt, uh, yards per game. All of them are dead. Last, huh? yards per attempt, passing yards per game, 27th out of 28 quarterbacks that fit this mold. So dead last or second to last, that is Sam Darnold where he ranks. We don't even know if he's good. Furthermore, you have a lot to prove, Sal, when you ain't got no more excuses. Mm. Sam Darnold had excuses. He only had one player in his three years with the Jets that went over 1,000 yards collectively. Le'Veon Bell, 2019. Mm. The Panthers going to have three players that go over 1,000 yards this year, and one might go over 2,000. They had two receivers go over 1,000 yards last year. Say it. One of three teams to have three receivers over 1,000 yards. Excuse me, two over 1,000 yards. So when you really look at where Sam Darnold is now going to, you go into a team with an offensive coordinator who made Joe Burrow the most prolific passer in SEC history when Joe Burrow couldn't beat out uh, Dwayne Haskins in Ohio State. You have an offensive coordinator who had Teddy Bridgewater, allowed Teddy Bridgewater to enjoy his most successful season in his NFL career. Now, Sam Darnold, you go into a team where you got weapons. You have the most uh, versatile running back in the game, Christian McCaffrey. You got 2,000-yard receivers, and you have one of the most young, brilliant offensive minds in the game in Joe Brady. You ain't got no excuses. We don't know if you're good. You got a lot to prove. Oh, it sounds like Darnold's going to a great situation. You made it sound even better. Darnold was traded because of bad performance in a bad situation. Not Wentz. Traded for bad performance in a bad situation that you helped create and make worse. So don't just give me the numbers, 13 and 25, and then you forget that every other quarterback with the Jets, Owen, 10. Oh, let's, let's grade them on a curve based on what others look like. You are a book cooker. Book cooker. You are a book cooker. Coming up, we're learning a lot about Doug Peterson's exit in Philly. We'll tell you if we're confident the Eagles will turn around things in Philly. That's next. Speak for yourself. I'm cooking books, dog. Doug Peterson was fired at the end of last season and the Athletic dropped a hammer on what went wrong in Philly. The article says Peterson was, quote, ridiculed and criticized for every decision. They went on to say he was beaten down by the constant second guessing in the front office, quote, treated him like a baby. Damn. Nick Sirianni is now in as head coach for an Eagles team that finished last in the NFC East. So, Acho, are you confident the Eagles will turn things around post-Doug Peterson? Not at all, Sel, because I have no reason to be confident. Y'all know me. I'm a resident Eagles fan. Have not missed an Eagles game. I don't know, eight, nine, ten years. You watch and all of them? I watch all them Eagles losses? Game. I had Last to, big dog, because I got a bunch of friends on the squad. And before I watched my friends on the squad, I was on the squad. So going back to, I missed the game since 2012. My dog. With that being said, where is my confidence going to be in this Philadelphia Eagles? Oh, I tell you. I can't put it in the quarterback, because he had a 52% completion percentage and a 77 passer rating. Uh, 12 completion percentage points below league average, not highest league <laughs> average, and 15 passer rating points below league average, not highest average. So mm. a young, blossoming quarterback, but mm. I can't put my confidence in that. Mm. Can't put my confidence in a head coach, a head coach who was nervous to give a presser before he played a game. Don't do that. He was. He was. We ain't even clowning so him on what? the show yet. He, he doesn't do what we do. Okay. Can't put my, you can't head coach. He has to stand up and galvanize <laughs> a group of men. If you can't stand up in front of some reporters, I'm questioning that. They need to be self-motivated. That's what I want to see. Okay. Can't put my confidence in the head coach. So I don't know where I can put my confidence there. When I look at the Philadelphia Eagles, I think they will probably be, I don't know, the second worst team in the NFC. I mean, in the entire NFC, y'all. Like, let's be real. Let's have an uncomfortable conversation if we shall. Ooh. Everybody <laughs> in the <laughs> NFC West is better than the Eagles. Everybody in the West. And, Cardinals. And, and, yeah, yeah. Nine, we see them in the playoffs later, right? whatever. Everybody in the NFC South is better than the oh, Eagles. I don't even know where they at. Only the other South. Only, maybe the Panthers aren't worse, but the Falcons probably better. Mm. You've got mm. uh, the, the Buccaneers, the mm. Saints. And mm. the NFC North, Packers better. Bears is better. Mm. Vikings is better. Mm. So the Eagles and the Lions are the teams that are kind of hovering around each other <laughs> as the low bottom feeders. So I don't see how they can turn it around, Sal. So oh. I want to. I'm an optimist for my Philadelphia Eagles. Yeah. But I don't see it. I remember when you first got on this show, uh, I asked you, did you meditate? Because 
I just want to know your depth of understanding yourself before you even try to interpret this world. And I remember you looked at me crazy. I remember you clown me. You're like, you meditate? You wake up in the morning and just stare at the walls? That's not what I said. Well, it felt that way. I don't know what the <laughs> hell you said. I'm still mad at you for that. Here you go. Let me answer this question. Yes, they could turn things around. Let me talk about confidence. But before I go to confidence, let's just take a collective breath of fresh air. I know it's corny to you. <gasps> Woosah. Now, I know what I'm going to get you. I'm going to get you an air purifier for your Beverly Hills adjacent condo, townhouse, adjacent. mansion, whatever you got, right? Because my wife bought these. She got like five of them in the house. Big old towers. I'm like, they ugly. But they work. <sighs> Carson Wentz ain't there anymore. <sighs> We're breathing fresh air. You ever see somebody taste the air so fresh? That's how you feel when you're in Philadelphia right now. You want some confidence? How about this? Ninth ranked rush offense. Okay. How about this? Third most sacks on defense. And the other two teams that had sacks ahead of them both made the playoffs in the Rams and Steelers. Mm. Want some confidence? All those dudes that were hurt last year, go through the list. A lot of them are going to be returning, and they're going to be healthy. Let's talk about this. You want some confidence? The Eagles have only had one stretch of consecutive losing seasons in 21 years. Oh, I thought you watched your team. Ah, uh, the Eagles have finished first or second in the division three of the last four years. Matter of fact, they got the best record in the division since 2017. And you say, oh, well, that was on Carson Wentz. Oh, be careful now, because Jalen Hurts in his three games that he started and finished, you know that that dude went out there with the number two total offense, 437 yards per game. I remind you in combined yardage, rushing, and passing that my man Jalen Hurts is third all time in his few starts. So not only a breath of fresh air, but something to have confidence in. I know you heard over there, Acho. Talk I'm not hurt, Sal, because I was there. Field. And the Eagles' best players currently on the roster still – I played with, okay. and I ain't played in six years, and I played with them for three years. So good. all of them are over 30. <laughs> that ain't good. Brandon Graham, defensive end, he just made his Pro Bowl. I think first one, shout out to my dog, BG, Peace. defensive end. Yes. Over 30. Fletcher Cox, over 30. Lane Johnson, over 30. Zach Ertz, over 30. Jason Kelsey, over 30. Brandon Brooks, over 30. All the nucleus of that team is aging or already aged. The quarterback on that team is far too young, and the head coach is in his embryonic stages. <laughs> not a good combination for success. Call him a tadpole. You ain't right. Coming up. <laughs> Julian Edelman, uh, really retired? Uh, I'm not so sure about that. Uh, we'll tell you if there's a chance he could join Tampa <laughs> Bay and his guy, Tom Brady. That's next. Hell, not a game. Super Bowl champion Julian Edelman announced his retirement earlier this week, but... Is the door really closed? His former teammate Rob Gronkowski mm. said there's a 69% chance he joins <laughs> him and Tom Brady with the Super Bowl Buccaneers. Uh, um, come on, Rob. Cute count. Uh -huh. But Marcellus, yes. what percent chance are you giving Edelman joining Brady and Tim? Uh, higher than 69%. It's going to happen. One, watching the video when he walked into the chair and sat down, he didn't even sit square and comfortably. He kept one leg down, one leg out, a little cheek out. He was like, look, I ain't going to be here long. Retired. I'll tell you why. Add, a, add all this up to tea leaves. He said initially he could play on a limited basis. Mm -hmm. Then right after that, he retired. Break it down, Sam. Oh, and then, oh, Tampa Bay haven't signed A.B. back yet, Break have down, they? Sam. And then all of a sudden, Gronkowski, you ran this play before. It's the Gronk play on three. One, two, three, Gronk. All that said, mm-hmm, he coming back. Trust. I got a conspiracy theory of my own self because you want to know what don't happen when you retired? Yeah. You don't get drug tested. Oh, he's trying to blow big? What so, you mean? No, the big thing is oh. his body is, is aging right now. He has some injuries. Retire for a little bit, maybe get on some of that stuff, let it run its course. Again? Run its course he already again. that stuff Come before. back in oh. and then go win you another Super Bowl. That's my oh. experience. Hide your wife, hide your kids, and hide your Mercedes in Beverly Hills. He'll jump on it. That's it for us. Fox Bet Live is next. Yeah, he coming back. He ain't done. <laughs>